So we've reached a nice point where we have our drag and drop. We've got our drag enter, we've got our drag leave. However, we don't really have this drag over event. And this is something that we haven't covered just yet. So in this video, we're gonna look at drag over. And we're also going to look at something called a drop effect. So the drop effect allows us to essentially change the cursor after we've dragged a draggable element or perhaps a file over a particular drop zone or a droppable area. It might be that we want to drop a link. It might be that we want to hint to the user that they are moving an item or perhaps copying an item. So we do in fact get a few different variations of a drop effect that changes the actual cursor on the page as the user is dragging. So that's something we're gonna cover in this video. Now, this will just be a short and sweet lesson on binding this drag over event listener. Now inside of our function, we're going to do two things. We're not gonna use a one line implicitly returned arrow function. We're in fact going to create a body of the function in this one. Now the first thing that we want to do is create a console log. Now inside of here, I'm going to put dragging dot dot dot. We'll also log out our event object. So when we drag our item over, you can see here that we have lots and lots of drag events. Now, the reason that we are including this event object is because we need to call prevent default. Now, this is because we are declaring a draggable area. And if we do not include this prevent default, it won't allow us to bind a drop event. So this is a crucial step for us is to prevent the default on the, our drag over. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this, we can see in a bit more detail how fast our drag events are firing and it quickly makes its way up to 100 events. So depending on what you want to do, we got our drag over. You can see now that we have a slightly different cursor. And if I was to go ahead and get rid of our prevent default, you can see that when we hover over this, our cursor is still that black circle that not allowed. However, when we undo those changes and add our prevent default back, it's now allowing us, or it looks like it's allowing us, to in fact create a droppable area. Now, one interesting thing is you can see that the green is in fact stuck here. So it looks like the event has actually prevented us and we can obviously go back and drag in and drag out. But because it's now allowed us to in fact drag it in, once we complete the drag, it kind of gets stuck. So we're gonna look at that momentarily as well. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you this different cursor that we can add. So you can see here that we have this small plus in the bottom right of my cursor. So we do actually have the capabilities to change this. Now what we can do is access this event object. We can then say data transfer, and then we can bind to this property called drop effect. And all we need to do is simply assign it a new value. So when we hit save, we'll see a slightly different cursor. You can see here that we just have a box. Now pay attention under the white mouse, the actual cursor that's being dragged. We have a white and black dotted box for our move. Now, if I change this over to a link, we then see something slightly differently as well. You can see we have this hyperlink sort of external link icon, this white box with a black arrow heading diagonally. And we also have a copy. So we can have a look at copy as well, which gives us a white box with a black plus inside. Now, there are a few more variations of this, but essentially we'll probably be using just one of these. So in this lesson, we have created a drag over. We've discussed that these are necessary to create a valid drop target. If we do not have a drag over, we cannot listen to a drop event, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing in the next lesson. So that's why I'm doing this up front. We've then looked at this data transfer object, or at least this property, which then has this drop effect. And what you could do in your own time is just have a look at this data transfer and go through, have a look in the console log, and expand our data transfer object and just become familiar in a bit more detail in your own time. And this is a great way that you can just learn new things and new tricks about different APIs is just to get inspired to just take a look through them in a bit more detail and perhaps look up their documentation. So that's it for this lesson. Let's dive into the next one and start listening to some drop events and learn how to pass data down from one element to another via this data transfer object.